All right, the White House this morning is walking back President Biden's comments that he made this past week, last week, on coal. Watch this. The president's words, we believe, were twisted, um, and uh, we were very clear about that. And anyone who knows Joe Biden knows he comes from a coal, uh, a coal country from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Okay, so we wanted to know what exactly was twisted. Here's what Joe Biden said about coal on Friday. It's also now cheaper to generate electricity from wind and solar than it is from coal and oil, literally cheaper. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America and having wind and solar. Joining me right now is House Minority Whip and member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Steve Scalise. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. There really wasn't much to twist. He said it out loud. He's going to shut down all the coal plants across the country. Well, happy election day to you, Maria, first of all, and uh, especially there in New York, where I think the people are going to take their state back by electing Lee Zeldin. Uh, you know, the president's spokesperson just referenced Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, Jim Bognett is going to flip the House seat in Scranton, Pennsylvania, from Democrat to Republican, because they don't like President Biden's anti-American energy strategy. He's done this from day one. He said it during the campaign when he was running for office. He said, no more drilling, period. Uh, did he forget that he said it? Because that's what he said. And then he did those things through executive action over and over again. He's attacked American energy and it's led to skyrocketing prices. And by the way, Maria, it's not cheaper to use wind and solar, even with the subsidies than coal and natural gas. And yet he's crushed American energy. It hurts families. Families are furious with it. And they're going to be voting against Democrats who joined with Biden for all these radical Green New Deal policies. It's why we're going to have this red wave. It means everybody's got to go out and vote. Make sure you vote today. But that's what's going to happen. And it's because of what Biden has done. And he continues to go after American energy. Well, isn't it a beautiful thing, our democracy, that is, that we could actually see the last two years of disastrous policies and their disastrous outcomes and come out and vote it out and want change. That is the beautiful thing about America. But I want to get your thoughts on the president and the Democrats' closing message to voters. Jerry Baker's new op-ed in the journal claims that the midterms endanger Democrats, not democracy. He writes, America's democracy is guaranteed and protected by a constitution of extraordinary genius, complexity, and durability. To suggest it is one set of midterm elections away from extinction is ludicrous and hyperbole. Well said from Jerry. Your thoughts, Congressman? I couldn't agree more, Maria, with that. And, and in fact, if you look, Democrats have been threatened by the loss of their own personal power. And they used, they had the House, Senate, and White House for the last two years. They could have used all that power to go help families. Instead, they did it to amass more power amongst themselves at the expense of hardworking families. And now those hardworking families are going to speak out at the ballot box against Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and the radical left's policies. And they are scared to death up in Washington that they're going to lose that power. They don't care about people. They didn't fight for people. We as Republicans have put a commitment to America out there showing the public what we would do if we get the House. And that's why we're going to get the House, because people are excited about a bold conservative vision for, for people that are willing to fight for them and, and help them to lower costs, to address crime, to secure the border, the things that people care about. It's not about Democrats' power, which is going to be taken away today. It's about those hardworking families who are struggling because the Democrats had all levers of power and abused that power to enrich themselves and their vision for a socialist left America, which is not what America wants. Well, look, I mean, we've already seen the impact of the Democrats' massive spending and $5 trillion in borrowing on Joe Biden's watch. But you also want to stop further mistakes from happening, which is why one of the priorities, I know, is to stop the money, $80 billion, earmarked for the IRS to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. What's the plan to stop that? How will you do it? Just defund the money? Yeah, on day one, in a Republican majority in January, you'll see us bring a bill to defund those 87,000 IRS agents. Frankly, we need more support at the border. We don't need IRS agents, and it's been confirmed by independent agencies. They're going to be going after lower- and middle-income families and small business owners. That's not what we need in our economy. 
Yeah, well, look, after that 87,000 uh, hire that Joe Biden wants to do, it'll be 166,000 IRS agents versus 15,000 or 20,000 border agents. I think it's closer to 15,000, but it's just extraordinary. Here's Joe Biden giving his midterm predictions last night. Watch. I'm feeling uh, I'm optimistic, and I'm always optimistic. The Democrats win the House. I think it's going to be tough, but I think we can. I think we'll win the Senate. I think the House is tougher. Liz Peek, jump in. Good morning, Congressman. Uh, a lot of what has happened in this White House has come through executive actions and regulations. Uh, shutting down the coal plants they're trying to do via regulations on uh, various emission standards changing. Uh, can you tell me what is the House going to do and the Energy Subcommittee going to do to prevent that happening? Because it is not just talk. Unfortunately, Biden is following up with some big rules changes which could really imperil uh, our coal fire plants. Yeah, and they've done most of this through regulation. You know, it's canceling pipelines, not just Keystone, all kind of other pipelines, not issuing new permits, uh, not issuing new leases, not having lease sales. Over and over again, the Biden administration has been anti-American energy. And I say American because Biden was OK with pipelines for Russia. He was OK with drilling when he begged Russia and Saudi Arabia to drill for oil. He just doesn't want America to do it. And the problem is we, we do it better than anywhere else in the world. We should be doing more of it here. So we're going to bring bills through the Energy and Commerce Committee, the Natural Resources Committee, to open that back up again. Obviously, you need a Republican Senate that would take up and pass these bills. You need a president that would be willing to sign them. But we need to give President Biden that opportunity uh, to, here's a bill, Mr. President, to lower energy costs for families who are struggling. Will you sign or veto that bill? Uh, he needs to be put in that position. And let's see what he says. Well, I guess I want to get your take on the supply side of things, because we talk a lot about demand and the economy slowing down with 40-year high inflation and higher interest rates. But you also have the supply side of the economy being talked about. Uh, Mark Tepper has brought this up a number of times. But this president keeps alienating corporate America, you know, attacking the oil companies and then saying, well, uh, we're going to shut down drilling. And then he says, why aren't you drilling? Uh, Congressman, your expectations in terms of uh, the economy and for the midterms in general, if the Republicans take control of the House, how can you work with Biden? Well, the first thing we're going to do is stop all these maddening two, two, $1 trillion, $2 trillion packages yeah. that are coming out of Washington, paying people not to work, uh, paying people to bail out failed states, shutting down the supply chain. Uh, that's going to end. And so... We're going to offer the president an opportunity to work with us. We've laid it out in the commitment to America. If we win the House, Marie, it means the American people said they gave us a mandate to go do those things. And let's see if the president's willing to listen to the American people and work with us. You know, President Clinton reluctantly but ultimately went along with, uh, with the Newt Gingrich majority in 94 because he saw the will of the people. Uh, will President Biden do the same? Will he be willing to acknowledge that the American people spoke? Will he acknowledge democracy working, people going to the polls in places like Scranton, Pennsylvania, rejecting his agenda and saying they want this bold conservative commitment to America that we put forward. Yep. Great points all around. Congressman, it's good to see you. We're going to be tracking all of the action all day. Thank you, sir. All right. Go vote, everybody. And uh, thank you, Maria.